Hey everyone, and welcome to a Scratch tutorial on how to make parallax scrolling in Scratch. This system I'll be showing today is super versatile. You can use it on both the X and Y axis, and you can also make it infinitely looped, so that way you don't have to make a million clones. It'll automatically render all the layers on the correct layer, so you know the ones in back would be behind the ones in front. Don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. We are so insanely close to 10,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough. But anyway, let's get right into this tutorial. Inside of my parallax sprite, I have a few costumes for the different layers. I have ground, background, background 2, background 3, and background 4. These are just a bunch of layers for our parallaxing background. Then I have a blank sprite with no costumes or anything called camera. Okay, so let's start in the parallax sprite. So when green flag clicked, we are going to go ahead and set the size to 100%, go to front, and then hide. Now we need a few variables for setting up the parallax. So make a for the sprite only variable called sprite width, and then a for the sprite only called ground spacing, also for the sprite only. And let's go ahead and hide those and then set these up. So for the sprite width, you set that to the width of your sprite. So I want my sprites to take up one screen. So that is 480. 80 pixels. Then the ground spacing will be equal to the sprite width times 2. And then to compensate for a little bit of padding in between, we'll set the sprite width to the sprite width minus 2. If we start this game, you can see that the sprite width is 478 and the ground spacing is 956. And it automatically sets up all those things. All we need to do is set the width of our background. Now to tidy this up, let's put this in a custom block. So go ahead and make a custom block called reset and run that without screen refresh. Now just put all that stuff in there and then run reset on when green flag clicked. And you can see that everything works the same. Now let's go ahead and pull out a switch costume to ground and go backwards one layer. Then we need to make a clone that will go right on our screen and then one all the way to the right of the screen. That way there's two of them so it always will cover up the screen. So we need to go ahead and make a X position variable. So make a for the sprite only variable called ground X. Now as you can tell here I'm only doing the stuff for the X axis axis like there's no height or ground y or anything that's because my parallaxing is just horizontal you can copy all the stuff to the vertical axis and it will all work so all we need to do is set the background x to zero then we want to create a clone of myself duplicate that and set the background x to the sprite width so that way it moves perfectly one sprite to the right then create a clone myself you can see that we have two clones up here but they aren't popping up so all we need to do is do a when i start as a clone and then a show block that way they pop up and you can immediately see that look at that we have the background here and we should have another one right behind it yep we do now you can see that the position isn't actually correct we want this to be perfectly in the center and then we want the next clone to be way over here so to fix this up all we need to do is make a tick message I'll call this tick move backgrounds. Now in the move background, you can just go to zero zero instead of zero zero, just do background X for the X position. And now we need to make sure we run that tick. So in the backdrops, when green flag click forever, move background. Now you can see that immediately they are positioned correctly. And if we try to move them, it'll even snap back to the correct position. And we see that second one over here. Now let's make it to where we can actually scroll around with the background here. So what we can go ahead and do is make a four sprite variable called scroll x. Like I said, if you want to do the y part, you'll also need to scroll y variable. Now all we need to do is go to the background x minus the scroll x. Now what you need to do in the camera is do a wind green flag click, set that scroll x to zero. Now let's make a simple movement script really quick. So we are just going to make a for the sprite only variable called x velocity like so and set that to zero in the beginning and now change that by key a pressed minus key d press actually the other way around sorry d minus a and now go ahead and set the x velocity to itself times a number smaller than one like 0 0.9 to simulate friction and last but not least change the scroll x by the x velocity so you can now see that if we've done everything correctly here we go we can actually use a and d to scroll our background and that actually works correctly. Now there is an issue though as you can see here the background kind of sticks on the wall and once we make it far enough to the left or the right it just stops immediately and I want the background here to loop. Here's how we can do that. Make a for the sprite only variable called base x and if you're doing y then you need a y version of 
that too. But the base X is just going to be set to this. That's just the unedited position on screen. And now you just plug in the base X right here. You can see that if we do this, it still works exactly the same. Now what we need to do here to make it loop is pull a mod block and put the base X in the left side and then mod the ground spacing and then subtract from that the sprite width like so. So make sure yours looks exactly like mine. So if we go ahead and start this, as you can see, look at that. It will infinitely loop. So what this is actually doing here is once one of these sprites reaches too far on the right, it'll instantly teleport it to the left or vice versa. And that's what creates the illusion of a perfectly seamless infinite background. And the best part is if we get our camera and take the X velocity times like 25, so it's going to be super, super fast. You can see that it never breaks. Now we could make new backgrounds backgrounds by duplicating all this and then manually typing out like go backwards two layers switch costume to the background and that's going to get really really messy as you can see like that just looks horrible and we have like six backgrounds so let's not do that let's make a tool that'll make it super clean and easy to make backgrounds that'll automatically order it and everything so what we can do here is make a custom block called clone background with a colon and then costume with a colon and then an input called costume a label called parallax amount with a colon and then parallax now you can click this run screen without refresh now that we have this block let's go ahead and pull all this inside here now what we need to go ahead and do is switch costume to the costume and then we can pull this block out right here now we can go ahead and just put ground because that is what our first costume's name is and then the parallax amount we haven't actually implemented yet so we'll just put one there so you can now see that when we start the game it works exactly the same now let's make the parallaxing work so that way we can make make it go slower or quicker depending on the parallax factor. So what we need to do is make a for the sprite only variable called parallax amount. Next we can just set the parallax amount to the parallax right here. Then in the tick move backgrounds we do background x minus scroll x times the parallax amount. So you can now see that it still works the same but if we put 0.5 in here say it should move half the speed. Yep as you can see it's really slow now. So that means that our parallax is working. So so now that we have a clean way of doing this, let's just duplicate this and then put the second name in. Let's do background and the parallax amount will be 0.5. So it goes half the speed. And as you can see, when we click the green flag, look at that. The background here pops in and it seamlessly parallaxes as well. Now the issue is, is the layering isn't correct because if I pull this away, you can see that the ground is behind it and that is horrible. We want it to be layered automatically so we don't have to manually put the stuff in. Let's make a fourth sprite only variable called I. That's just like a shorthand name or a variable that goes in a loop. So now in the beginning, set that I to zero. Now you can just change the I by two here and then go backwards I layers like this. You can now see as soon as we start, there we go. Everything is layered perfectly and it loops seamlessly and it looks great. How that actually works is in the very beginning, it goes to front and the I is zero. Then each time it creates this, it changes the I by two, which makes it go back farther than the last one. So the first one will go back two, the next one will go back four, the next one will go back six. The way you can reorder them is just by reordering the time they're created. So if I make the background first, then the ground, you can see that the background is in front of the ground. So now with the base system in place, we can go ahead and finish out making all the other backgrounds. So duplicate this and the next one is called background two. So we can go ahead and do background two and then the parallax amount will be 0.2. So if the number is zero, it won't move at all. And if it's one, it will move the same same speed as a camera. So that means that we can make this slower by just decreasing the number. Background 3, I'll go ahead and do 0.1. So that's the clouds here. And then last but not least, background 4 is the sky. And I want it to move really slow, so I'll do 0.02. So you can now see as soon as we start, it automatically layers everything and the parallaxing factor is working. So that is awesome. And then just to show you how the parallaxing stuff works, if I set the background 4, which is the sky's parallaxing amount to 2, as you can see, the sky moves twice as fast as the camera. A quick tip for you, if you want a seamless background, make sure the two sides match. Because as you can see here, if I go ahead and make this hill have a point like that, you can see that the seams here don't actually match up and it doesn't look good. So the way I made it seamless is by drawing a rectangle because a rectangle has two sides that are perfectly on the same Y. Then from there, I went in and added all the bumps. So now you can make all the fancy shapes you want. As long as it doesn't go over like that, you'll be fine. And now if I go ahead and name this test like so no caps all I need to do to make that into an actual background 
want is type in test and I want this to be in front of the ground so at the very front and the speed will be 1.3 as you can see here if I start the game here we go we have a foreground element that's super fast compared to everything else and then to make everything else visible I'd probably move this down a bit and there we go look at that we have like a cool I don't, I don't really know what that is I just randomly made it but it looks like it's close to the camera and like I said earlier, if you want to make this also work with the Y, all you need to do is make a base Y. So it would just be base Y, background Y, scroll Y, and then you would duplicate all this and then change this to base Y, the ground spacing Y, and then the sprite height. And then you would have to separate the ground spacing into X and Y. So this would just be for the X. It'll take some modification, but it'll still work pretty similarly. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope this tutorial helped you out, if it did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. And also, I just noticed there's a new tab up here, and there's a bunch of different modes. Catter day mode? No way, it's the cat blocks. I think this is for April Fools. What are these other modes? 90s mode? Oh my gosh, old timey mode? It's literally old time. Okay, this is like the coolest thing. And prehistoric mode. Okay, I maybe got a little sidetracked there. But anyway, this has been Owen, and I am out.